This week we are making a cake in the shape of a book with a Warrior Cats theme. I'm starting with a 10 inch by 12 inch chocolate cake and I'm just using my leveller to trim it flat on top. I'm then going to cut this in half as I do like to have plenty of filling in my cake. Using a knife I'm just cutting down the centre which gives us this nice rectangle book shape. I'm now just trimming off all the outer edges and giving them a sprinkling of sugar syrup. I'll leave everything I've used in the description box below. I'm using ganache to stick my first layer to the board and then filling it with a mint buttercream. You'll see I haven't quite gone to the full edge with the filling as I'm going to be trimming this down so the book isn't as long. Once I have stacked all the layers, I'm just trimming off that bit at the bottom for a nice rectangle proportion. You can either keep this and use it for extra details on your cake, eat it, or sometimes I've wrapped it up and passed it on to the customer if the chunk is big enough. Now scrape off any excess filling coming from the sides and coat the whole thing in a layer of chocolate ganache to seal it in. You'll see I have my trusty Pro Froster out. It doesn't just do rounds, it does squares as well. There's a full video on using my Pro Froster, which I'll leave linked below. First, I'm just going around smoothing the sides so I know they're a bit more level than what my eyes could make it. Once you have the sides done, you can bring that arm down to meet the top of your cake and scrape off the excess ganache from there. Keep adding ganache to gaps and holes and scraping around to slowly see your sharp rectangle emerge. Now we have our rectangle, we want a little hump on one long side for the spine of the book. To do this, I've decided to build it up with ganache. Who can complain that they have too much chocolate? Place ganache in the middle and use your spatula to create a hump shape. Once you've got quite a bit on, you can then take a flexi smoother and curve it in your hand to pull across the spine to smooth it out a bit. Again, keep going with this, filling the holes in and smoothing until you have a nice clean hump on one of your long sides. Once it's all set, spritz your three straight sides with water and roll some white paste long enough to cover it. Keep this a little thicker so we can add some deep texture in. I'm just unrolling mine around the cake and flattening it on with a smoother. Trim all the bottom edges clean around the hump of the spine and also trim off some of the excess on the top. You can go back in and make it neater once you have the bulk of it off. With the Dresden tool I'm marking in page lines. You'll see I'm not putting them in straight and neatly, I'm just adding lots in and also concentrating on flicking out the very edges of the pages to make it look old and worn. When doing the other sides, make your strokes go in the other direction to meet that corner so the edges stick out and look fluffy. Now dampen the rest of the ganache and lay over some brown sugar paste. When trimming this, leave at least a centimetre overhang for your book cover. You'll see I'm cutting off most of mine first and then going back in to neaten it up. The very corner edges, depending on your paste, can flop. So to keep them up and a bit straighter, I'm inserting an acupuncture needle, resting that piece of paste on until it dries. Brown can be a very floppy colour. Now I'm just marking in near the spine with a long metal ruler and neatening it up on the edges with the Dresden tool. As this is a Warrior Cats theme and the birthday girl's favourite character is called Ivy Pool, we are adding the character's famous scratches to the centre of the book. I first make them long enough and then I wiggle my tool to widen them. This would make a great feature on a horror themed book too. I'm then going in lighter with my Dresden tool and running it all across the brown cover for distress marks and creases. Roll up some small pink sausages and push them into the scratch marks. You can leave these bumpy as it adds to the effect. Now I'm covering around the cake using the toilet seat method. I've still cut a circle despite the cake being rectangle. As you can see, you can push and manipulate it up against the cake to still get a nice clean finish. The full tutorial is always linked in the description box. 
I'm now taking my favourite texture mat, which is just a piece of tinfoil, and pushing this all around the freshly laid paste. I've now gone back to my metal ruler and I'm pushing in lines for the brickwork. Once I've got the long ones in, I'll do the shorter ones with my Dresden tool. As you will have pushed and manipulated the paste, you may have to go round and trim the board again. I've now got some black paint watered down with just plain water and I'm painting it into all that texture and the lines. I've then got some green gel colour and I'm dabbing this around the brickwork for old mossy stone. To complete the other side of the book cover, I've cut out very thin strips of the same brown and I'm laying it right up against the pages, cutting the ends at a 45 degree angle. You can help push them straight with the metal ruler. Go in and do the shorter edges, making sure it meets with the spine. I've now decided I wanted a bit more moss, so I'm going back in a bit more intensely with that green. This is the first I had heard of warrior cats, but they do seem to have two different wordings, one just called warriors and one called warrior cats. So I asked which was preferred and then traced this out onto a piece of greaseproof paper, which was cut to size so I knew it would fit in that top gap. You just want to trace over this to leave an impression on the cake and then fill and follow those lines with gold paint. I also did the exact same technique for the birthday girl's name on the spine of the book. You'll see I'm holding my hand steady whilst painting, which aids in a smoother paint job. I've now put some brown airbrush colour into my gun and I'm spraying all the pages to give them a base colour. And then I'm taking a wet brush and pulling that colour into all those page lines, drying it off with a piece of kitchen roll. I'm now going back in with the brown, concentrating on shadowy or darker areas around the spine, across the top and bottoms of the cover and the edges of the pages. I then decided to do the spine and the edges of the top of the cover. I also took my damp paintbrush to the scratches for a more detailed effect. I've now switched out from brown to black and I'm doing the very edges of the board and really deepening where the book is sitting on the stone and also running colour widely across the joins, aiming for a really dark old stone look. Whilst this is wet, I am pushing on some green paste in blobs and attacking it with my star piping tip. You see me do this technique lots, but I do love those little patches of moss for detail. To help with my icon sizing, I'm just folding some greaseproof paper. Mine was a circle, but it really doesn't matter what the shape is. I'm just cutting a square from it so that it will give me several squares all the same size that I can lay out on my book cover. Warrior cats seem to have emblems for their different clans, a little bit like Harry Potter have houses. I'm just laying these out so I know they will fit and it will also help as a guide as I hand paint them on in the same gold paint. Now for Ivy Pool. I'm just taking some white paste and rolling a chubby carrot shape, elongating one end and adding a waist to the chunky end. Place this on your book cover with the point sticking up for the neck and add a cocktail stick down to support the head. I'm then trimming the neck down a little bit shorter. Most of the details are made up of white sausages pushed into little bends and stuck with water. This is the back paw that she's laid on and the front paw starts as a ball with a sausage pulled from it, bent at the base and the larger piece is squashed down and trimmed down a little bit flatter so it will sit against the body better. Smooth this on the best you can and arrange the paws. 
front legs are also sausages with a little bend, trimmed down and pushed against the front of the body. Don't forget to add a tail. I've squashed a teardrop shape which I'm adding to the front of the neck just for that fluffy furry area that some ivy pool drawings have. And then trimming the neck down again ready for the head. The head starts as a ball with your finger run across the centre to indent the eye area. Push the larger bottom into a slightly pointed muzzle. Above this start marking in larger eye sockets. With the sharp end, press in a tiny triangle for the nose, a line down the centre and two diagonal ones coming from it for the mouth. I'm also scoring the shape I want for the eyes and then pushing the insides of this in a little with the larger end. Fill these holes with a pale blue lemon shape, squashing them down flat. You can also push the head down in the centre, as cats do sometimes always look a bit angry. Rearrange the head on the stick however you want it, and squash some little soft triangles for ears. Ivy Pool has a little chunk missing from one of her ears, so I've just cut that out with a scalpel. Add in some black ovals for eyes and the white balls for catch lights. At this point, you can make any cat you like, it's just a white base, but Ivy Pool is light and dark grey, so I've mixed some paint together and I'm painting on all her markings. Now I'm just going in with some pale pink for her nose, inside her ears and the little toe beans underneath her paw. To finish off, I'm now blending that moss into the board with the black airbrush colour and also going back in adding shadow underneath the cat figure. These clusters of artificial flowers can really finish off the cake quickly and efficiently without adding too much expense to the customer had you made it out of sugar. I like the dark leaves and the deep purple that's going to add that depth to the whole design. I've trimmed the wire down to this little stump, which means once I've decided where to place the cluster, I can push a ball of that same matching green paste onto the end and also down onto the board, which keeps it nice and secure in position. You can also go back in and add texture just the same as the moss to help it blend in. I'm then just going around the cake, placing clusters where I want them to complete the design. Lastly, once everything is in position, I can add my edge to the board and paint it in the matching gold. And we're done! You can turn this book cake into anything you like just by changing the figure, the colours and the board design. Feel free to make your foliage out of sugar for that extra special touch, but just know that sometimes it can add a lot more expense to certain designs where it might not be needed. I know a few of you wanted a book tutorial, so hopefully this will fill that gap for you. Let me know what sort of book theme you would choose to make in the comments below and I'll see you again next week. Bye guys. Thank you.